We've all encountered situations in which it would be very helpful to define some local things, whether they be variables or other things like local or anonymous classes even in, uh, in some languages. And Haskell has a couple of useful mechanisms for defining local declarations at itself. The two main ways that you'll go about defining local things are let and where. And on the surface, it looks like the main difference between them is that a let statement declares things first and then uses them in an expression, whereas a where statement comes after some definition statement that uses it, some construct like a function definition or a variable definition that uses a, a local thing, like a local variable, and then where allows you to say, oh, that was supposed to be seven or that kind of thing. So on the surface, they look like just the ordering is the main difference. Under the hood, there is one other somewhat important difference, and that is that a let statement is itself a full-fledged expression and can result in a value and can be used in further computations or further uh, operations. Whereas a where statement is attached to, as I said, some construct like a function definition and can, and can only be used in relation to that kind of definition statement, that kind of construct. So we'll see some examples of both of those and how those can be different in practice. First here is two pretty basic examples of writing a circumference function. So here's circumference of r. We say let pi equal 3.14 in 2 times pi times r. So we are defining a local variable up front and then we're using it in some calculation. And once we know what r is when this circumference is called, then we'll be able to calculate the circumference using that local variable and the parameter r. So the let statement has access to the parameters of the function that it was defined in or has access to whatever thing it was being defined inside of. Here, we just go ahead and say circumference 2 of r is equal to 2 times pi times r. And then with the where statement, we kind of go back and say, yeah, pi was supposed to be 3.14. And so it allows us to define it after the fact. The where statement is attached to this definition statement that's happening before it. And likewise, the where statement would be allowed to use the parameters of that function definition if it needed to, and we'll see some examples of that soon. So I mentioned that there's an actual practical difference between the two of them. Here we have a let statement being used in a calculation. So we let g of x equal x plus 1. We also let y equal 4. You can define multiple things in a let statement all sort of in one go. You don't have to say let over and over. So we let g of x equal x plus 1. We let y equal 4 in g of y, which of course gives us 4 plus 1, also known as 5, as a result because the let statement itself is an expression that can result in a value. So it results in 5. We add 1. This whole example is an expression that's equal to the number 6. On the other hand, we attach where to a definition like y equals 3 plus x, and then we say where x equals 7. So we're sort of back defining the x that was used there, and it has to be attached to some definition, some statement like this to be able to fill back in things. It's not an expression on its own that could result in an actual value like the let statement can. Here's a pair of examples that also show some things about where versus let. So here we define pay distribution. If a person works a particular number of hours at a particular pay rate, 
then we calculate a few things about their pay to be able to see how their pay will be distributed. The gross income, the total, is just the hours times the pay rate. Their retirement withholding is a certain percentage times the gross. Their union dues are another certain percentage times the gross. You'll see that we are using part of the let definition in the later things. And then we even use some of the later ones in yet others. So tax is 0.2 times the gross minus the retirement and union. Those are pre-tax in this example. And then we say the net is the gross minus all of those other things. So we're able to define multiple things. We're able to use those in the definition of later variables or functions here too. And we state that those are used in this tuple that we're going to return. So pay distribution will return this tuple of net, retirement, union, and tax, our full pay distribution. The where statement states that the pay distribution's hour or is takes hours and rate and gives us net, retirement, union, and tax. This tuple, same one as above, and then it goes to define those different things, the gross, the retirement, the union, the tax, and the net. So these two are pretty much equivalent here. It's just a, a choice of whether you're making the statement of what the function does and then defining those local variables, or you define those local things up front and then make the statement of what the function will return. In this case, it's mostly a choice of preference. In some cases, there are some actual reasons to use one versus the other. Here we have a function that's defined using guards so that we choose a speed based on our distance from our target of some sort. We slow down as we get closer to it. So if we're already there, our speed will be zero. If we're only 10 away, then our speed will be 0.25. If we are 20 away, then our speed will be 0.5. Otherwise, our speed is one. The where statement allows us to use the parameters, just like a let statement could as well, from the function that it's attached to. But because the where statement is attached to this function definition construct, then we're able to define this distance across the multiple guards. A let statement usually would have to be inside of one of these guards, and we might have to repeat it in multiple of them, or we might have to state the let statement and then create an inner function that uses these guards. It gets a bit messier. So the where statement's allowed to define things that then get sort of backwards applied to all of the let um, all of the guards or all of the various different patterns that we're using here in our function definition. So it can be useful and cleaner in that way to define something for a whole complex function definition like this choose speed one. Here are a couple of other function definition examples to show you how the let statement works when we're defining a helper function. Here we define find. We want to find x in the list L. Well, we can define a helper function f that when the list is empty, when f is called on an empty list, we get false. And when f is called on a list that has a head and a tail, then we do some stuff. We recursively call for f and we see if that thing is contained at our current location or somewhere later. And we say that's used in f of L. So we've got this helper function defined internally that is being used on the input of L, the list there, of our find. And F is, does not exist outside of this find. So the find behaves the way we would expect it to. We can ask to find three in the list one, two, three, four, and we get true. We can ask to find five in the list one, two, three, four, and we get false but f ceases to exist after that in statement. It does not exist outside of the find function. That allows us to do things like define a different f inside of our check sorted. So this f will check for pairs of items and a tail. 
it compares the two items that it's got, and then it calls F with Y and the tail so that it can compare against later items. If it's given anything that does not have pairs, then it returns true. And then we just call F on our list. So here, check sorted again gives results like we would expect. If I call it with less than on one, two, three, it says true. It's sorted because those pairs are all sorted relative to each other. And on one, five, three, it returns false. But again, F does not exist outside of check sorted because it's local. And F is different than the previous F that was given here. This allows us to have much cleaner um, modules when we're developing a module. And we don't have to worry about, so there's not some floating helper function that a user of our module has to be confused by. And we don't have to worry about multiple times of defining some simple name like F because it's local. It doesn't exist outside of that setting, and we can have different Fs that are simple named local things in other functions as well. Here's one last example where we've even defined a more complex inner function that uses pattern matching. So we're writing factorial, and we want it to be easy for our users, so we define factorial that only takes n. But we also want it to be tail recursive so that we can take advantage of the features of tail recursion and possible optimizations. So we write a factorial helper inside. And we've seen some previous examples of functions where we wrote helpers that had to have their own name and had to, be, had to exist outside of the function that they were helping, which is not the cleanest way to develop code. So here, the factorial helper if given zero and some result that it's accumulated, it will just return the result. If it's given any other number and the result that it's accumulated, it will continue to accumulate the result and it will call recursively with n minus one and that newly accumulated result. And then all we have to do is call factorial helper on n and one, one being our starting result and it's now a tail recursive function without any funny starting value that our users have to give it and without this helper function being visible and confusing to our users or perhaps even misused by users. So let statements and where statements both allow us to define local things. A let statement is itself its own expression and its own statement. It allows us to define complex things like functions with guards or with um, pattern matching. And it will result in a value if it's used in a situation where it can be actually calculated. On the other hand, a where statement has to be attached to some definition, some construct like a definition. And it allows us to define things that belong to that whole construct, that whole definition, and can make it a little cleaner to define things that are needed across parts of a complex function definition. So both of those will be helpful to you in writing more complex functions, in having less repetitive code, and in writing cleaner files and modules that don't have a bunch of constants or helper functions floating around to be confusing or possibly even misused.